Okay, let's talk about vectors. And here is a vector right here, this little yellow arrow. This vector happens to be in something called standard position, where it's kind of emanating from the origin here. But we want to write this vector in A, B form, uh, basically with its horizontal and vertical components. So a lot of different ways we can express a, vectors, uh, this, a vector. Uh, this is a pretty common way, so you're definitely going to need to know how to do this. Now, if you're not familiar with vectors, well, uh, they are tremendously important in mathematics, science, engineering. So if you're taking a course like physics, you're going to be uh, quite familiar with vectors because they're all over the place. So vectors, again, tremendously important. But uh, typically, uh, for math students, you don't start seeing vectors, generally speaking, until a course like, let's say, pre-calculus. So I teach vectors pretty thoroughly in my pre-calculus course. I'll give you more information on that in a second. But uh, for those of you that don't know what a vector is, okay, I'm just going to give you a quick 10-second uh, introduction to a vector. So vectors we represent, we can be um, can be represented by an arrow, okay? So look, you have a little starting point, and an arrow goes like this. And basically, uh, a vector represents two things, okay? It represents both direction, okay, direction and magnitude. So an example would be like the wind, okay? So the wind is blowing, let's say it's blowing zero, three, zero degrees at uh, 10 knots, okay? So uh, there's two components to what's going on with the wind, the direction and the magnitude. And here, uh, again, vectors are expressed as arrows. The longer the arrow, the more the magnitude and the direction of the arrow, the actual you know, direction of it, is the direction of the vector, okay? So if you're not familiar with uh, vectors, well, this video might be a little bit uh, too much, but it's not that difficult. Stick around uh, and you'll learn something about vectors and how to write vectors. But uh, I do have other videos on vectors in my pre-calculus playlist, so you can check that out. But anyways, what we wanna do here is uh, express this vector. Okay, now again, we do have magnitude, okay? The, the length of this vector is six, Okay, and the direction is 30 degrees. So this is a vector what we call, again, in standard form, where the, the tail, the vector, is here at the origin. Okay, so hopefully what I'm saying here uh, resonates with you because you've been studying vectors, but this is not that difficult of a problem. Matter of fact, uh, I suggest doing this problem without a calculator, okay, without a calculator. A lot of vector problems, you do need a calculator, but I'm going to get into exactly how to do this, and we'll cover, just review uh, this uh, form of uh, vectors in terms of writing a vector in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I've, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could help you excel in your math courses. Now, if you're going to be taking any exam that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool program you might want to check out. And if you don't have any math notes, well, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this uh, video. Uh, my vector uh, topic or uh, notes are going to be within my pre-calculus notes. Those aren't uh, quite ready yet. So if you really uh, need notes, you might want to check out my pre-calculus course. Again, you can find that by just going to my main website. All right, so let's get into it. And again, if you think you know how to do this, it's actually pretty easy. Go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section and uh, we'll kind of compare and see uh, how you did. But anyways, let's get into it. So here is the kind of a basic uh, overview of the situation, okay? So here is our vector. It's this, uh, this arrow right here emanating from the origin, okay? And it has this, um, it has a head and it has a tail, all right? Just like any kind of arrow right there. So what we want to do in this particular form of writing a vector, is you see where this this uh, the end of this vector, the end of this tail ends at this point right there. So that's a specific like x y coordinate. Okay. Now that x y coordinate we would express as a b. 
Okay, so A would be the X component and B would be the Y component. So I'm using A, B, but it's an ordered pair X, uh, Y. Okay, now this uh, notation with these parentheses that represents this point, that is that location right there. But I could just go ahead and write it with these little brackets like this, and this would express that vector. Okay, and it's basically expre expressing this vector right here. It's constructing this vector with its horizontal component and its vertical component. So if I'm like, okay, the vector has this uh, horizontal component and this vertical component, well then this right here, from starting from here out to there is the vector. Okay, so we can just go ahead and give these two locations or give this uh, point, okay, when a vector is in standard position, and we can express this vector like this. So very uh, straightforward. So effectively what we're trying to do is simply find this coordinate right there where the, um, the this arrow ends, okay? So this is all basic trigonometry. Matter of fact, you don't even need trigonometry in this particular problem. You just need to understand special right triangles. So now that you, uh, you know, I kind of gave you an idea of what to do, let me go back here and show you the problem, okay? So again, this particular problem, what do we want to do? Well, we want to find this coordinate there, and this does form a right triangle. So this is a pretty big hint, okay? And hopefully, a lot of you guys are going to be like, hmm, okay, I kind of know what to do here. I could do that, and if you can't do that, go ahead and put your uh, um, answers in the uh, comment section, okay? So again, uh, what I like to do, the way I like to teach is, hey, if you don't know something, let me give you a little bit of knowledge and then see if you can close the gap with things that you should already know right now. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and get into the actual solution now. Okay, so again, here's our vector, 30 degrees, 6 is the length of this um, uh, vector, okay, emanating from the origin. So uh, we want to go ahead and build ourselves a right triangle. We want to know this component right here, okay, and this component right there. So you got a right triangle, and you have 30 degrees, okay, in this right triangle. And that should ring uh, a lot of, like, alarm bells going off up here, okay? You should be like, oh, yeah, 30 degrees, uh, right triangle, okay, a 30 what? What's that? Um, uh, what's that angle right there? I'm gonna say 30 blank 90 degree triangle. Hopefully you said 60 degrees. If that is the case, let me give you a check mark. This is a 30 60 90 right triangle. You need to be very familiar with 30 60 uh, 90 degree right triangles. They're all over the place in mathematics, geometry, trigonometry, and everything else. So. Again, you could do this problem without the aid of a calculator. Another special right triangle that you need to be familiar with is the 45-45. You need to like have these triangles mastered. So anytime you're working with a particular problem in trigonometry, uh, uh, physics, it uh, doesn't make a difference. You see 30 degrees, okay, you want to be thinking 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in, uh, a little bit um, in more detail. So here's our 30 right here okay so we're being told this is 30 degrees though this is 90 so this right here must be 60 degrees okay but we have to kind of orientate ourselves here uh to how you studied or hopefully learned about 30 60 and 90 right triangles so uh let me just draw well i already did this i kind of just drew a little triangle right here and you can't confuse this okay because you know, if you look at the 30 degrees that's going to be more acute obviously than 60 degrees so you got to draw your little figure correct and you got to have this kind of stuff in your memory okay this is basic uh, geometry basic trigonometry so here's our 30 degrees i kind of like to draw this little reference triangle this way this is 30 degrees okay so this is 60 degrees now we have uh, three sides we have the uh, hypotenuse which is always going to be the longest side in this case it's going to be that six then we have the shortest side, and then we have the medium side, okay, the middle uh, length side, right? So these are the three sides. Now, here's what you need to know, okay? The hypotenuse, or the longest side, all right, is always going to be double the shortest side, okay? So whatever the shortest side is, we just take that and multiply it by two, we have the hypotenuse. So if you look at the six right here, 
this six must be double the shortest side. So here's our shortest side right here. So six divided by two, I'm pretty sure that is three. Okay, so this is my shortest side. If I double it, it becomes six. So you already have right here uh, the vertical component to this vector. Okay, beautiful. Now, to get the middle length, okay, you take that shortest side, wherever, whatever that is. In this case, it's three. And you're going to take that and multiply it by the square root of three. So it's always the short side times the square root of three is that middle length. So in this case, that would be three square root of three. Now, if you knew this and uh, you're like able to kind of recognize this, that's excellent. Okay, very, very good. But let's go ahead and now put this together. This is kind of the big uh, heavy work to do in this uh, problem. And actually, this is pretty easy stuff. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and put it all together and write this vector now. So we have this length of this uh, 30, 60, 90 right triangle that represents which are the components to this vector. This is 3. This is uh, 3 square root of 3. By the way, Okay, if this vector is going off in this direction or this direction, we're going to have to consider the signs, okay? So in other words, you're going to have to consider whether uh, these components are positive and negative. That does uh, certainly play a big role. All right, so again, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, kind of just think of this as an ordered pair, this point right here. So this would be my, my x, this would be like my y. So it's an xy point, or you could think of this as a, b, or this vector a b so what is my uh, x component or my uh, horizontal component that is a three square root of three and then my vertical component is three and here is my vector okay so this vector right here i can express it uh, with its components right there All right so if you got this answer right i must go ahead and give you a happy face with a good old 1982 mohawk with extra aquanet hairspray in the a plus and I'll give you a few uh, stars just to make you feel extra special today. But uh, that's very good. Okay, so this is, a, again, pretty basic, um, actually a very basic uh, vector problem. But guess what? You know, when you learn anything, you have to start with the basics and build yourself up. And oftentimes, when people uh, struggle in mathematics or science or anything else, uh, it's because they don't understand the basics well enough. Or they assume, oh, yeah, I got that, I got that. And they go too quick and they kind of skip through or speed through the foundations. That's one of the worst things you can do. So anytime you're learning something, okay, or reviewing something, pay special attention to the basics. Pay uh, special attention to the foundations. That's how you build a strong foundation, just like a house, okay? The stronger your foundation is, the better your structure, the stronger the structure is going to be, okay? Math, science, no different. Okay, so if this little video was helpful in some small way, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, uh, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content on my channel and I'm posting new material uh, all the time. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.